So without further ado, if you'd like to step up to the mic, uh, just introduce yourself, uh, what your address is in okay. Zipir, and take up to uh, five minutes for five minutes. whatever you'd like to talk to us about. Okay. Wave me down if I run too long. Hopefully it won't come to that. Uh, my name is Chuck Cross. I live at 3019 Cano Place um, here in Superior. I've been here since 2002, so 15 years. Uh, I have two things I, I'd like to bring up. Um, the first thing is probably an easier one, is the Coyote Ridge area. You know, last year there was the big leash community gathering here, and which was great, and we got like 35 people here, mostly pro-leash, you know, off-leash um, people. Um, but part of the meeting changed over to what sort of the philosophy of Coyote Ridge is. Mm -hmm. um, and we came out of there and sort of almost came to a vote is, most people want Coyote Ridge left alone, left as natural as possible. There's a few people that said, okay, let's go in and do the required maintenance to like for erosion, uh, keep the trails in good shape. But I think the general consensus wasn't for doing a lot of development up there. Um, and I think in May or June last year, I think it was ProStat put together a community work group out there. And I understand them wanting to do good, except some of the work they did, I think, is a detriment to Coyote Ridge. It's, they put up big T posts that you can see from about a quarter mile away. They put little signs on top of them, paper, and they're blowing in the breeze. Um, <clears throat> they uh, use straw to sort of rejuvenate some of the areas, but a lot of people, if you know straw, will suffocate anything it sits on, especially if it gets wet. Um, so where I'm going at with this is I think I'd like to see people talk about a standard for Cody Ridge, especially given what I saw last year in the community gathering about leashes, is, you know, like Sandy one time talked about maybe building a bike park, park out there. That is like the last thing we want out there. And I think it was just discussion. I'm not uh, debating Sandy on this. But I think the community really wants to be left alone. I love going up there as it is, and maybe I'm not the only person that feels, that feels they want more development, but I like it to go up there and chill out and be as natural as possible. Okay. So. If you want a quick response to that. So that, that actually is the uh, uh, plan as well, to keep it as natural as possible. Uh, <clears throat> the stated goals between OSAC, ProStack, uh, staff, and I believe the town board is buying on this as well, is to uh, keep it as natural as we can and whatever work we do up there, is more to, as you mentioned, help with the maintenance. Um, the floods that happened in 2013 caused some serious erosion up there, okay. and there's concern that the way the trails uh, were impacted by that, they're no longer sustainable. So the work that was done uh, back when you mentioned by ProStack, uh, and again, I believe they're planning another uh, volunteer event in the spring. Um, the idea was to go up there and try to improve the trails to make sure that they will be there for a long time. Um, and then in addition to that, there's a, uh, a trail that is, uh, I don't want to use the word constructed because that gives a bad impression, but uh, it will, it's under design right now uh, to create a more permanent trail uh, leading down the east side of the Coyote Ridge area. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Park. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that that's kind of where that stands. But okay. I, I definitely appreciate these comments, and it's, yeah. we can pass them on to ProStack as well to yeah, make I, sure. I saw that they were going to go out and do more work, and I just think more T posts. And and I don't mind they put out signs. It's just maybe something like low to the ground that when you're closer you can see it that you can't see from a quarter mile away. Cause yeah, I love I love the ridge. I'm out there every day. I mean, I I have two border collies, so a border collie you got to walk. So you walk <laughs> a lot. No, for sure. We appreciate that information. I'll pass it on, definitely. Okay. And the other subject, and let me know if I'm running out of time, is I know there's been a lot of discussions about dog waste. Um, last year, when the leash issue came up, we put together sort of an impromptu community of dog people um, that was headed by Mark Arbitrio. Mark, I think, may have left the area and moved out of town. Uh, it's a big concern to me, too. I mean, I pick up mine and I pick up everybody else's out there and I understand uh, maybe even seasonal I noticed it more this time of year than I did in September because I actually charted everything I saw in September I went around for a month who I saw how many people I saw how many kids I saw how much poop I saw how many <laughs> I saw I did more charting than you want to know <laughs> 
but the end point of that is I think dogs are a huge benefit, but I see waste and I see that's a big problem. And I, it makes me mad as a dog owner. So I'm sort of maybe volunteering that I'll get in contact with this group, see if we have some ideas to combat this. Because I love being out there with my dogs. But also I just see some things a town might do. It's like down by the, what I call is the upper pond between Yarrow and whatever that other street is. There's a waste can, but no bag station. So maybe put a bag station there. Maybe that'll help. Um, one of the other stations a little further up by the upper pond, it's out by the street, maybe pulling that in. So maybe it's a little closer. And I think some of that stuff we can help, but I think there is a mentality here and it really bothers me that people don't pick up. Um, but I know you want to put up signs and I think signs have a limited effect. If you want to see failure of signs go over by the apartments and there's waste all over there mm -hmm. and those dogs are unleashed. So it's not a leash thing. It's people being lazy thing. Yep. <clears throat> so maybe how we approach that is maybe put up some signs like that, but also some things like you wouldn't throw a can out here. They have a picture of a guy throwing a can in the open space. Like you wouldn't do that. So why are you letting your dog do this? You know, cause I don't think the sign approach will have as much effect as is needed. And I also will volunteer you out to pick up myself because I have picked it up already. So you tell me where there's yeah. a problem. <laughs> I'll go pick up because it pisses me off. No, we, we appreciate that fully. I, as a dog owner, I have the exact same sentiments <laughs> yeah. as you do. Um, so it sounds like, as you've seen, it is something that we're interested in. Uh, it's on our agenda tonight. Uh, we're likely going to end up scheduling some type of cleanup event uh, uh, to get volunteers across the town to, to do a pickup. Um, okay. And then, as you noted, we're in the process of talking about signs and the best way to do it. Um, something that we've kicked around is trying to point out the detriments uh, of it rather than just the laws. But I, I love your idea also, and I think yeah, that's something we'll, we'll work in. Like if you go to Boulder open space, there's signs. Yeah, it, you're right. There, there's limited effectiveness. It's one of those. Yeah. What's the best way to do it? And I think anytime we can get uh, the ad campaign to maybe get in people's heads a little bit. You know, yeah. Be, no, that's great. Anyway, I, I'm willing to help. I'm willing to pass it on to the. You know, we didn't have a leader or anything like that. It was very just disorganized, but that was okay. But I can try to get a hold of the email list because I helped build it. Yeah. And send a note out saying, "Hey, you guys gather at this meeting. If there's a cleanup event, please come." That. Like that. That would be great, and we'll we'll def also definitely make sure it gets publicized over the uh, CAC listserv and all the other marketing tools that the town has. But yeah, that that's excellent. And I would say if you have, I mean, you mentioned one sign, or I assume you're meaning like that would go like you're not going to throw your own waste out here. That would yeah, be on a sign or something. Change the odd campaign I, to be. If you have like more that. ideas to that, I would say definitely let us know also because we are. <laughs> okay. Any ideas you have, we're completely open to. So. Okay, how's the best way to? Reach um. Allison, is there any contact emails on the OSAC website? Is that okay? All right. I have um, my name, Allison James, as the staff liaison for the group, and the email is on our page on the town website. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you just Google OSAC Superior, it'll bring you to our, okay. to our webpage. I just want to go the best route. Okay, I'll let you know. Yeah. Some ideas. And Allison will let us know anything you let her <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Thank good. you so much. Really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I know I'm way over my five minutes, but I appreciate it. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Caitlin Kelly, twenty thirty five Eagle Avenue in Saddlebrook. I am just getting into town hall meetings, so I'm a little nervous. Bear with me, please. No, no problem. Don't be nervous. <laughs> um, I've been a homeowner for two years in this town. It's my first time, and I always told myself when I settled down that I would get involved. So I just want to thank all of you for your time and your energy that you put into the town because it does not go unnoticed. Um, with that being said, I am here just representing a couple people's interests at Saddlebrook and wondering how you feel about acquiring the Zaharis property on 88th. I was unaware of the condition of the reservoir a few years ago. And I was shown pictures and informed of kind of the restoration that what that entire area went through. I know that a lot of people in the community and that I've talked to just going to HOA meetings have their grandkids coming over and they're bird watching, noticing the habitat and everything like that. Um, so that's one thing that is a big concern for us is preventing the contamination of that reservoir if that land is to possibly be developed. 
Another concern we've been having recently is the wastewater treatment plant on Honey Creek Lane. Uh, the smell there has been getting worse progressively over the last couple months. And we have been in contact with a gentleman at the town who's been really helpful with us reaching out to him. Another concern uh, we have is the dog waste as well along the community. As a dog owner, constantly walking around the town, not just in our little area, you notice the dog waste. So another concern would be bringing in a development, more people, more dogs, more negligence, especially if they're not homeowners. They're not people investing in the town, voting on issues and really putting in their time and energy to what they believe is best. So thank you. And that's all I've got. Okay. Um if you'd like, we can respond to your first question about our interest with the Zaharias property. Absolutely. Thank you. So, yeah. So uh, we kind of have a, uh, a ongoing list that gets updated pretty much on an annual basis um, and of our targets that we are interested in acquiring for open space. Mm -hmm. The Zaharias property is our number two acquisition target. So it's something we're very interested in. Uh, it's been price prohibitive for us to do anything about it thus far. Um, but it's certainly something that we're keeping our eye on at all times. Okay. And uh, we're actually in the process of updating all of our uh, open space targets right now. So uh, if you are interested, keep your eyes open over our next couple meetings and uh, we'll be discussing this directly. What's the number one on the list? Uh, the level three property. Okay. Um, are you familiar with it? Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no. Thank you guys for, for attending. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have a lot of turnover in their leadership over there, so <laughs> there's a lot of that was in the last year's March meeting also. It's like I sideways out of the leash issue and say, listen, our biggest threat to our area is probably selling that with the elephant. Yep. You guys want to say that it's hurt you. Always on the top of our list. <laughs> Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, we have a new member tonight. Uh, Sarah, welcome. Um, I think I'd like to try something different tonight than we've uh, done in the past. I think to help facilitate uh, the group getting to know each other a little bit better, um, let's just go down the line and everybody introduce yourself, who you are, and why you joined the committee. Uh, I think that'll be a good way to introduce ourselves to you. and to each other because we haven't done that in the past so uh i'll go ahead and start my name is ken lish uh, i'm the chair i've been on the committee for three or four years now uh and i joined uh because i'm pretty passionate about open space i wanted to make sure that if there was anything i could do to help the committee it uh or help the community uh i could do something i was passionate about so this is where i uh, ended up Hi, Trisha Dunham. I'm the vice chair. Uh, I've been on now the longest. I think I'm mm -hmm. the senior member <laughs> on the group, and I joined in 2013. Um, same thing. I'm interested in the open space. Coming from the East Coast, you don't have as much open space as you do when you get to Colorado and you look around. And um, so I thought this was a good way to get involved. I back up to Coyote Ridge on the Huron Peak side, so. Um, I'm always interested in that area as well. Joel White, I've been on the committee, I think 18 months, two years, something like that. Um, I joined the committee because I moved to Superior uh, about the time that the town center was you know, being drawn up and thought about lots of changes. Um, I joined this committee because what I moved into was what I loved and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna sit by idly and let things change for what I felt, you know, better or worse. I, w I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, I, I did what I could to help protect what I loved and why I moved here, so. Andy Quatt, I've been, uh, I guess I was the newest member until you joined, uh, joined <laughs> last in October, and uh, I'm in this area two years from South Florida. I was renting in Boulder for a little while and, and, and bought, live in uh, Calmonte here in Superior since May. And just the uh, you know, same thing, open spaces would attracted us to this, to Colorado, and especially to this area of Colorado. So um, I'm happy to participate and help protect it and expand it. Oh, look at that, uh, Ryan Welch. I joined last summer. Uh, same reasons. I mean, being from Colorado and loving the open space of this area, 
seeing different parts of the front range even of some areas that are more built in and then you come up here in Boulder County and then these areas how open it is we moved here fell in love and wanted to do anything I could to help maintain that for our town um, I'll introduce myself so I'm Sarah and I moved to Superior in 2015 one of the first events that my husband and I went to um, just before we went under contract was the Chili Fest and I remember talking to some folks who might have been part of OSAC or other um, committees looking at different trails and um, just having the opportunity to be involved in that in the open space. My husband and I have two dogs and um, out there every day so I'm glad to be part of this group. And you guys want to introduce yourself? <laughs> I'm Mark Lasis, I'm the trustee liaison here. And I'm Allison James, and I am the staff liaison, and I work with Parks, Recreation, and Open Space. All right. So moving on, <coughs> uh, we added a, uh, a agenda item tonight to discuss the uh, joint board dinner meeting that we had this past month with the town board. Um, <clears throat> we discussed uh, five different topics. Uh, we talked about the open space acquisition plan and, and priorities for acquiring open space, the Coal Creek Corridor and Shan Shan Trailhead, uh, the Rocky Mountain Greenway, and then National Trails Day and outdoor education programs, and then a uh, unscheduled agenda item of discussing the OSAC ProStack uh, potential merger down the road, uh, if what our thoughts were on that. Um, I guess anybody can talk about what uh, what they thought were the big takeaway points or anything like that. Um, I can go ahead and start. My the things that I really took away is uh, there's this overarching intergovernmental agreement that uh, Manager Magley referenced that I don't think any of us are really aware of that talks about open space or just land purchases, I should say, in the region. Uh, so that's something that's going to uh, dictate whether or not we can. Uh, purchase uh, land outside of Superior, if that's something we can even consider. Um, that's something we'll talk about later tonight. Um, <clears throat> but there was good uh, uh, good discussion about taking advantage of partnering with others, whether it's current landowners, whether it's developers in the future, uh, easements, that sort of thing. I think that's a great idea. and We've had some back and forth via email on that and I think that's definitely something we're going to want to uh, pursue going forward. Um, one of the other things related to open space acquisition that uh, I thought was really uh, interesting was the idea that was brought up about whether or not open space funds could be used for sports fields. Um, that's been something that's stuck in my head mm -hmm. since uh, since that conversation and, and I I completely agree with the sentiment at the meeting that I'd rather see sports fields rather than more development, but yeah. I I still am very hesitant to say yes, it, it's a good idea to use open space funds for that. That's not what this, the tax was passed for, and the argument that we've opened up uh, that possibility by funding trails with open space money, I'm not sure holds because we're still connecting open space and allowing people to utilize open space better and get them outdoors uh, to enjoy our natural resources, uh, whereas ball fields are, are are completely different. So that's just something that stuck in my mind and, and I've thought a lot about. But anybody else have anything that kind of? I, when I watched that part, um I had the same kind of thoughts and then I was thinking well is it that you would use the fund which I don't even know I think someone would have to go back and look at you know what people voted for in the election and, and really look at that but um, but then my thought was uh, if you used the funds possibly to purchase the land but then not use the funds to implement the non open space part so in my head, and this is just me in my head after watching it, so if you took something like Zaharias and you purchased that, so the open space would be used to purchase that and possibly then use the open space that we would, you know, implement around the reservoir, whatever you want, you know, the viewing or that, but then the town would have to maybe out of a different fund fund anything that would be done 
um, outside of, like, you know, if you put in fields or, you know, the parking lot and all the other things that you could put on the other parts. I wasn't even sure that that would be, but it definitely was an interesting idea that came up out of the yeah. That you I, guys I think had. it's something that Kendra, the the town attorney, would have to weigh in on whether it's even possible. And then, if it was, I think that's something that we'd have to to think about very hard about where we'd want to, what side of that we want to land on, and whatnot. So, sh how do we go about asking her to do that? I mean, should we actually find out sooner rather than later? I, I Seems would like it'd be a good thing. I would say it might be good on this one just to hold off to see where we land with our open space acquisition targets first, Correct. see if we have any recommendations for what we can go forward on, if there is anything, and then if this gets brought up by the board further as a desire, I think that would be the time to okay. to gather that next piece of information. Can I just ask for clarification? So what you're asking is whether the town's open space fund can be used for anything other than kind of natural open space, if it could be used for you know, developed open yeah. space. Yeah, I think the term's like programmed that. open space or programmed. some something like that, or programmed uh, fields. Programmed. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. I think I think the issue, the issue or came up, fields, yeah. you know, insofar as we've got a fund that's set up through sales tax, mm -hmm. and uh, that fund is meant to be used for acquisition purposes, but acquisition depends upon having a willing seller. Yep. And if we don't have a willing seller, if it's price prohibitive then we could presumably be amassing all this money and not having the means to actually use it for anything because either we don't have a willing seller or it's too expensive to actually purchase those properties. Absolutely. And we right. expanded, and, and I mean, even I think from the beginning it was acquisition and then maintenance of open space. Mm -hmm. So that's where we got um, sort of the idea that using some of it for trail, you know, expediting trails and things like that but to ken's point to bring you out to the open space that's where we've sort of yeah i'm not i'm not sure we're at the point yet that you're referring to i right, think there's still more right yeah I, I think i was just talking but yeah. hypothetically but you what you're what you're looking for in, in terms of direction to prioritize the various acquisitions is whether the town actually has the ability to do something that otherwise you would just be following the status quo, which is going after natural open space that has been undeveloped. Yep. yep. Okay. I'll, I'll bring it up with the board on Monday. Okay. So. Can I get one clarification on that, Mark? <clears throat> when we say it's cost prohibitive, is there a set limit, or is it just that we know it's just not reasonable or what the town normally would spend? I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's, I don't think there's any offer on any table right now that that I'm referencing, but you know, if we've got a certain pool of money, and if the, the price that somebody wants to sell it for is more than what we can pay, if we just mm -hmm. don't have the, the the amount in the fund, or alternatively, if it's just from a market perspective, if it's just yeah, you know, so so much higher than what the market will will pay, uh, you know, then I think probably the board would say it's cost prohibitive. Okay, and thanks. And I'm blank. I don't remember the exact numbers. It was a discussion that happened when I early on when I joined the committee, uh, but it, it was back. Uh, Patrick had mentioned that there's generally some type of square cost per square foot that that open space is, is kind of a standard at that you would pay, and once you're getting beyond that, it it becomes something you have to be really uh, considerate of, and that was where we had landed with Sahari. So it was. Uh, considerably above what typically is paid for open space. I don't remember how much that was or even what Zaharias came out to with that amount, but I, I remember this conversation from like three or four years ago. How much is in the fund and how much um, goes in there each year based on the sales tax? We have about five and a half million dollars in that fund right now and roughly uh, 500,000 uh, goes into it every year from the sales tax. I think it's a 0.3% sales tax. I think that's that right. Yeah. Is the Harris on the market for sale right now? It is, um, it is on the market. It's been on the market since, well, at least since 2012, if not before that. But it's been on since I moved into town. But, so, um, but most recently, in the last, say, eight months, it has had two development 
or concept plans, concept plans, concept plans let's get those, come forward that um, have come forward to the board f and they've had, um, have pushed back on those back to the person who wants to develop it and say, well, we like this or we don't like that. As far um, as I know, it's still for sale. They just haven't come back with anything since the board last gave direction, as far yeah. as I know. Right. They, they came with a concept plan to the board, and then we haven't heard from them since. But I think there's a sign out there that says it's for sale. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yep. And that sign's been there. Like, right. <laughs> since right. I've moved right. to town, I don't know about others who've lived here longer, but it's been there. Um, and it has been one that has routinely what they were selling it for price has been outside of what we thought was reasonable. Yeah, that the town, I mean... You know, the town has been lucky that some of the people who have sold to the town as well have either been long-term residents or things like that and have sold them at better deals. Like, so you have to weigh it against that, I guess. Any other thoughts from the trustee meeting with us? Well, the only other thing I took away was just the Rocky Mountain Greenway. You know, how, <clears throat> I don't know if scary is the right word, but how nervous I seem to be getting about what's going to go on there. I guess it was good to hear that there was the plan testing that I think was contingent with a lot of the local communities, that that's still ongoing, and they're trying to figure out the right protocol for that. But it still makes me nervous and really hope we can figure out how to connect around that and keep that in our forefront. I mean, I know it is, but it just was a good reminder of that for me. Yep, and I, and I think that's something we've got on here to expand further on. But yeah, I, I had the same, I had the same thoughts. I think we agenda item number nine tonight. I'll save my thoughts for that. <laughs> okay. Well, in that case, uh, we can move on to our, our next uh, our next topic. Um, the uh, open space acquisition plan in review. Um, so all of you guys have uh, a series of documents in front of you. Um, if, uh, if either of you guys are interested in taking a look at the map we're going to be referencing, I think we have a couple extra up there um, that you can look at. Um, so let's take a look at this map first. You can take the whole packet. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, you guys don't need the rest of the packet. Those are uh, stuff that we'll be going around doing but yeah <clears throat> so the map um, this map came directly out of the open space summary report that uh, was published in 2005 so the initial report that actually evaluated the properties that could be targets for open space acquisition um, we have gone through here and indicated with green circles the properties that are still available uh, potentially for acquisition and crossed off with a red line the properties that have been acquired for open space purposes for development purposes or otherwise so at this point in time there are seven properties that uh, we're gonna go forward with a review on um, number one is the level three property that's at the bottom of the page uh, Number two is the Bulljack property. That's the bottom left corner of the page. Uh, number three is the Ridge 2 property. Uh, that's kind of on the left middle side of the page. Um, number four is the 76th Street parcels. That's in the, the upper left corner of the page. Uh, number five is Rogers Farm. Uh, again, kind of on the leftish side of the page. Number six is the Anderson property. Um, on this map, it's referred to as the Weinstein B property. Uh, it's name changed uh, in between when this was printed in 2005 and now. So we're going to go forward with calling it the Anderson property, but that's why there's an inconsistency in here. And number seven was the Zaharias property, uh, and that's on the right side of the page. So if you then refer to the other handouts that, that's in front of you, these are evaluation worksheets um, as you can see there are various uh, categories there that we want to evaluate each of these properties against the idea is that for each of the rows on on this sheet you will give it a score between 0 and 10 10 uh, 
means the that particular attribute uh, scored really highly for you. You think it has uh, significant value. Uh, zero means that there's absolutely no value there. So for instance, one of the attributes here is quiet. If we're out in the middle of nowhere and you can't hear anything, that's probably a 10. If you're right next to Highway 36 and all you can hear is loud cars zooming by, that's probably a zero or a one. So that that's how we're going to rate these. Um, so over the next two months, uh, what we'd like each committee member to do is to physically go out and visit each of these properties and take these evaluation worksheets with you. You have seven evaluation worksheets in front of you tonight. So fill out one of these for each property. Um, we'll use next month's meeting just kind of as a uh, check-in point to find out where people are, see if there's any questions, see if there's any clarifications that are needed, that sort of thing. And then the idea is that two months from now, uh, we will have all of these worksheets completed and you guys will be able to hand, it, hand them over to uh, Ryan, Trish, and myself and we'll do some data input into Excel spreadsheets and actually calculate how each of these properties fell out and this is going to be the basis for our uh, trail uh, ratings and rankings uh, going forward and will pretty much be the core of the uh, recommendations that we'll make. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? So can this, I was trying to figure out what is the notes column? Were there special notes about that? That's the very last column there. Or those, I was trying to look through here to see if there was reference to those. Because I just noticed there's some terms in here that I may not <clears throat> quite understand. I mean, I can go look them up, but I was wondering if maybe that solved that. Ah, oh, that is a good question. And I don't recall off the top of my head, I I think that there might have been a notes page in the uh, summary report from 2005. I'm looking um, through it though, and I don't don't see it, but I can look. I can. So that that's something that if you I'll find, get back to you. I say if you find that, just shoot it out to the committee. Uh, yeah, just okay. let him know what it is, and but I'll also look and okay. whichever one of us finds it first, let's just let everybody know what the notes column means. So just for notes purposes, um, the plan is to have all evals complete by the May meeting. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I will uh, reach out to the committee members that are not here tonight and make sure that they understand what uh, we're doing and get them the map and the uh, evaluation worksheet as well. Just kind of on the level could, property. could you come up to the microphone? It's, it's just being taped and uh, just for public record and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, just, just for consistency, Steve, because I, I work in IT and you get all kinds of different values. Like on level three, it's so big. If you stand over by Pirate Park, it might be very quiet. Or if Sarah stands over by the South Pool, it might be much louder. So just to interject on where you get your data from and make sure it's consistent. Yep. So. No, I think that's a that's a very good point and, and something that we need to make sure. So when we're out looking at these properties, uh, do your best to uh, to try to walk the majority of the property and, and make your answers on aggregate if possible. Uh, along those lines, are, are there any access issues like, for instance, Bulljack? Um, there's a house on that property currently, right? I mean, it's it's a private residence. I think you're yeah, going to have to stand on the road for yeah, Bulljack. It, I mean, it is it is a private property. Level three is not going to be upset sure, with you, but yeah. um, sorry, to your point, you know, level three standing at 128 is going to be much louder than mm -hmm. level three standing even in the middle of it because that's, I forget, it's a hundred and something acres over there, so you're not going to, yeah. you might walk some of it, but you're not <laughs> possibly not going to walk it all. And, and I haven't been out to all of these par properties recently. I, I think what we're going to have to do with some of these is just uh, walk the uh, perimeters of them. Right. Um, actually getting out to them might not be possible. So. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I, I travel to the Anderson property quite often. Zaharias is easily ex accessible, mm -hmm. level three as well. don't know anything about the 76 street parcels. Um, I, I ride down Marshall pretty, a lot. But. Yeah, I, I mean, I think they're just there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the danger maybe a bit over there is that you wander off of it right. <laughs> onto something else, but if you kind of get to that. Yeah, I mean, and, it'll, and along um, the same points about where you stand and things. I mean, I think time of day matters. I think day of week matters. And Absolutely. so I think 
unless you're taking multiple sample points, you have to be at least cognizant of, hey, I'm here in the middle of the night on a Tuesday yep. versus yeah. you know, five o'clock on a Wednesday evening. Yeah. And just um, Allison and Mark, you might know this. I believe you've seen concept plans for 76, concept plans for um, Zaharias, and I don't think there's been any for Anderson, right? But those are the two that I believe have had. Isn't 76 where they did the concept plan for the storage, right? It was no, senior, living. senior living. Senior yeah. living over 55. Yeah. I, I believe you're right. That, that was I, I before think my, my time come on of the it, board. There's, yeah. there's been a concept plan for Zaharias. There's been a concept plan for Anderson. Anderson's submitted a development plan. So um, I question whether you want to spend much time on, on Anderson because, I mean, we haven't seen what the application looks like. So I, I have no idea what's going to happen to it. But at least it seems like there's a ready, willing, and able landowner that wants to develop that parcel so. yeah and in all likelihood that will probably happen but i mean I, I think we wanted to just leave it on there since it hasn't even been through the planning commission yet and just through our own due diligence right. might as well make That's sure fine. that we get it done an interesting thing the group may want to think about is it doesn't always have to be a purchase of this entire mm -hmm. parcel and if there's areas that are more um, desirable in a parcel and the price is too high you know a portion of it could be purchased and and that I know that's never really been discussed but it's just an idea yep and and I think uh, something that's not on this uh, evaluation worksheet that we could go ahead and mention also is that if you see something that you think the group absolutely needs to know feel free to write a note down at the bottom and we can capture that we can just add when we're doing the data input we can add another column just says uh, additional notes that way we can capture any thoughts so for instance if you see that part of the parcel would be excellent but the rest isn't go ahead and make that note and we can make sure that it gets captured in our uh, in our data and memorialized and, and to that end um, also to the extent that somebody actually is going to develop something there's still requirements that certain parts of that development need to have open space attributes to it. So if, if there is, you know, a bunch of eyes on a, on a parcel of land and, and they identify that, okay, this part, part of this parcel is really prime <coughs> for preservation purposes, the board would love to hear that. Mm -hmm. And that's 35%, I believe, for anybody who's not familiar with the requirement. Um, Okay. Um, Allison, can you uh, talk about that intergovernmental <laughs> agreement? Just one thing or before she does. I just want to say, because Mark and I both attended the, um, uh, what are you guys calling that, the community outreach or community engagement meetings on, um, on Monday. And I just want to say that I, because uh, things had come up about the comprehensive plan and I just let the, uh, it was recorded and I let the attendees there know that we were looking at the open space plan that OSAC was, so I just wanted to bring that back. The, that meeting was recorded? We had a, a video camera there, so I... I don't I, know if it's been linked up yet. I don't know, but I presume they're going to... Oh, cool, that was up. great. I couldn't yeah. make it. I assumed I wouldn't be able to find out what happened unless I talked to people, but if it's been recorded, that's awesome. Well, there was a camera recording. <laughs> no, okay. No, I believe it was the town recording. I'll check the website. Okay. Allison? Okay, so um, the doc I looked up the document for you guys, and um, what it is is a super IGA, and it's Boulder County Wide Coordinated Comprehensive Development Plan um, Intergovernmental Agreement, and um, the entities that were that signed the document originally are City of Boulder, Town of Erie, Jamestown, Lafayette, Longmont, Louisville, Lyons. Nederland, uh, Superior, and Boulder um, County. And since then, since that time, Lafayette and Erie have dropped out. Everyone else remained in. Broomfield was not included. We do not have any type of IGA with Broomfield. But I circled the paragraph that's important, which is um, no party shall purchase any parcel of land either within the incorporated limits of another party or within the influence area of another party 
as designated in Exhibit A, which I'll show the group in a second, it's a huge map, without the express consent of, each, of such other party. However, this restriction shall not apply to parcels to be acquired solely for municipal utility purposes. And then it's not online. So this is our real formal copy. And it just illustrates, um, it's huge, these different, um, you know, a legend that shows, um, you know, what's, unincorporated rural land, um, different area boundaries, and um, one of the takeaways that I took from this document is that basically to keep the characteristics of the different municipalities um, whole and leaving a sort of buffer around the line of the municipality to kind of keep the character um, has been agreed upon. So, so I guess this the summarized version of that is if there was anything that we felt would truly benefit Superior's open space needs that was not within the town of Superior, we would need to go out and speak with that municipality. And this, ha this would have to be done at a much higher level than us uh, to to see if that was uh, in their interest as well and as whether and whether they'd be willing to do it. Yes, and I would assume that would go for groups that weren't within this agreement just as a matter of course yeah mm -hmm. we see what's going on over at uh, Lafayette and Erie right now so we certainly don't want to uh <laughs> that may be why they're not in this any longer <laughs> yes <laughs> okay um so I guess to the group that means we can keep our eyes open see if there's anything out there I don't think this is the time to add anything outside of Superior to our uh, evaluation. But if we just keep our eyes open and know that it's a possibility and if we truly believe that there's something that we should act upon, we can always send it as a recommendation up to the board and let the board decide whether uh, they want to move forward with that. Yeah, to me it's just another you know, think tank type of idea. It's like conservation easements buying part of a property um, you know buying it with open space putting parks on it instead I mean yeah. we're just trying to look at everything because when we look at this map there's a lot of red lines here mm -hmm. and I fear that the next time we look at this map in five years or ten years will be even more so um, I think we just throw everything out there and, and see down the road if something does come up yeah and and this would be a great opportunity if there is something on the edge tagged as a partnership uh, possibly. I was going to say there's probably a bigger chance of something if it's on the you know uh, north side of 36 that Louisville might approach the same way we've done with Boulder like we bought Shan Shan with Boulder funds mm -hmm. and Superior funds they might come as a trifecta the same thing um, south is a little south is Broomfield or Arvada or uh, okay I didn't know Broomfield yeah, yeah. Uh, Jefferson County, I believe, is on the, uh, yeah, south and, south and west. Okay. Well, does anybody have any other questions, comments about, uh, about our open space acquisition and whatnot? Okay. Um, the next agenda item is, uh, National Trails Day. Um, we are now at the point that we need to start seriously uh, get planning underway. Allison has already done uh, quite a bit. <laughs> has been on the ball getting this uh, rolling. Um, Allison, do you want to just give a quick summary of what's what you've put together? Sure. So um, I've got the permits from Boulder County. So that's all done. I got them in uh, last week. Applied for those. Um, I actually have t-shirts in for everybody. I'll need your size to order one. And um, I forgot to bring them, but I will <laughs> bring them at the next meeting. Um, we've reserved uh, Birds of Prey again. We've re uh, reserved uh, Center for Snake Conservation again. The Big Tent is on slate. The same amount of chairs and tables and uh, 
tents have been ordered and reserved. Um, so we're pretty well, we've got a lot done. <laughs> um. Are we asking Boulder uh, County Rangers to come again? Are we gonna give them a tent? They came last year, right? I they yeah, they did. I um, contacted my um, group there last year, um, but I just need to know what the group, you know, if we're going to have a running club again, if we're, if there's going to be hike and picture walk, um, if you want the range, uh, the Boulder County outdoor <coughs> education group to come, you know. I, I think that was uh, a great addition, having them them there to answer questions and whatnot. Uh, I think our lineup from last year was pretty darn great. Uh, mm -hmm. When is yeah. National Trails there? Uh, June 4th. June 4th. June 4th. This year. It's the Sunday. It's always the Sunday, first Sunday of June. Yep. We found Sundays worked better. It, it didn't interfere with as much um, sports that happened on what Saturday. Are, what are the hours of it and how many people attended last year? It's 9 to 12, and we usually are there between 8 and 8.15 to do some setup. Mm -hmm. um, over 300 people last year. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was a huge great. event. It's been, yeah. we've done it four years, and this, this will be four. This will this be five? 20. Either way, it's been it's growing. Four. It's been the four. It will be the fourth this okay. year. Okay. And it's, it's at been the Colton Trailhead? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's been growing tremendously every year. Uh, so we, uh, one of the things we talked about last year was uh, trying to, see if we could do some mowing uh, and push the tents back farther uh is that something that our permits would allow us to do or that boulder county would be okay with i'm not sure about mowing it's it's kept pretty low um out there already and if we have the chairs that we had i mean everybody sat in the grass last year well, I think we're thinking this year of trying to swing it, you know, where we had the, the snake guy when we just did him on the, our, our, uh, the own after the pavilion, so up on that hill a little better. Well, we have to watch out for sprinklers, irrigation. So our yeah. one problem would be, um, you know, we wouldn't be able to put anything down into the ground for, to hold the tin up. It would have to be some other type of... <laughs> oh, those... Those weights again. <laughs> Um, like rain barrels or something like that. Um, they gave us cement barrels one year. Yeah. That was not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Setup was much more difficult that year. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, the mowing is, the, the area is mowed. Yeah. I mean, it would be just like it, it is where we had it set up on that other side. That back area is mowed this, to the same height as yeah. the area where we've been holding it. So so the comment that I had, I, I created a lessons learned document from last year and just things we could uh, potentially improve upon. Um, we, if the BOCO group hadn't brought their own tent, we would have been short one tent, but I think that was figured out ahead of time to make sure we were good there. Um, we there was a note that we discussed that we did need more chairs than we had last year i th um that was that's funny because i asked that at one of the meetings and um we talked about bring your own chair at one point yeah yep. so um if you want me to order more chairs i just need to know how many do we did you order oh gosh i want to say maybe 75 to 100. okay it worked well on the other snake day because I went with my sons and held a snake because that was imperative mm -hmm. to them. <laughs> um, <laughs> that people, we kind of pushed on that to bring your own or bring a blanket and that kind of work. So maybe we, so maybe yeah. we don't need more chairs. We just need to be clearer to folks to bring. Add it to the marketing material. So, yeah, something to sit on. Um, and I can add that into our little blurb where we have bring a hat, bring sunscreen, bring water, yeah, bring okay. a chair. Let's <laughs> Let's let's just do that then. We can keep the chairs at the same same okay. amount. Um, another note that I had was that uh, we had a desire to figure out how to provide shade for the audience while they're watching the activities. And uh, that's the bigger tent. Yeah, that was the the harder issue. Um, just because people were dying last year it was so hot. Um, we 
Allison, did you say it's the same size tent, or you said it was a bigger tent? It was the same size tent as the Arbor Day, um, and everybody, okay. I, I think that was kind of the agreement with everybody that they thought that the Arbor Day tent was a good size, mm -hmm. and so we're just ordering that same size. I think it's like 24 by 26 or something. something that like That's that. much bigger than what we had out there, which for the presentations was nothing so <laughs> well we'll still have our small tents well yeah but this for like the booth for every, well, right yeah for the booths and then we'll have that additional mm -hmm. arbor day size tent and and that's where we would be doing the hawks and snakes and whatnot correct right? and i mean really okay. the only place to put it is up and back against where the fence is i mean there's really no other level area unless it was the parking lot which we, we so that's a lot further back than we had been in the past right because we were a lot closer to the okay the side it, of the we might facilities. need when it gets closer we might need to pay closer attention to how how long that grass is i think last year might have been too long like it was fairly long having people go back there i think yeah and then i'm not sure who mows that okay but i can figure it out okay Something we can we can follow up on as it gets closer and see what see what it looks like. Um, mowing we talked about. Uh, we also talked about uh, mowing across the street um, at the Richmond. Uh, well, now the Superior. Uh, uh, Sixteen, twelve. What was it? Fifteen. Fifteen. There it is. Superior fifteen property for more parking. Uh, but I think that that's been improved since Chili Fest. Like okay. that seems pretty. It's gravel now. Like it's. It's as long as it can handle parking, because we were having parking issues last year and didn't have great overflow for people. But now it's after Chili. I parked up there for Chili Fest, and I parked up there for um, the horses. The equestrian. We yeah, <laughs> we parked up there, and it seems to be better, um, a better surface now than it was in June. Of last year, I think and that then the question for Chile. The question would be: Last time we gave overflow parking instructions. Yep. I would assume we'd want to do that again. Absolutely. Yeah. I, th I think the anticipation is that we're going to have just as many, if not more, numbers. Hopefully, more. So, yeah, giving overflow direction and parking on parking is <coughs> safety number one issue. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we did not do last year that was different from prior years is we did not give uh, do any swag type giveaways, you know, water bottles, first aid kits, anything like that. I think that was fine. It didn't seem to uh, take anything away from the event. One thing that was great was that we had a bunch of uh, water bottles, juice. Uh, Some snacks. Yeah. Kids. I don't think we gave away the snacks. I think the youth leadership the group. Youth, youth leadership, we can, they did the snacks. We had water. Yep, we had waters and juices, yep. and I've we need to increase the amount of water and juice we got last year because I had to make a run midway to make sure we had <laughs> enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, is the youth? Do you know if the youth group is wants to do an event, uh, do a activity again? I could check their work plan, um, but I'm not sure at this time. Okay. Okay. Let's. They've always done something, so I think let's just we'll leave it open for them to do that again, and we'll. Uh, just make sure that they are going to do that and if not then we might have to add something else to the mix if the youth group doesn't um it's possible or even with the youth group maybe that art the new art committee caps oh yeah okay. yep caps. caps yep you know but we talked about that before like nature art like you know doing maybe that photo paper or something it might be Heck, they might just want to have a booth out there with us uh, if they want to. We can yeah. reach out to them to see if they're interested in, in participating. Yeah. Um, and then the only other uh, big note that I had uh, from last year had to do with our raffle tickets. We had 130 last year. Uh, we hit exactly 130 people that took tickets, so we need to do more. But as far as the data we are collecting... Um, we should this year collect phone numbers instead of email addresses because we couldn't read a lot of those email addresses. <laughs> um, and then also something we talked about was adding a data field for uh, age ranges so we could start to see who was actually out there using the trail. Mm -hmm. So like a 0 to 18, 19 to 30, whatever. Um, 
So I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those that handwriting, it's almost like double duty when you have someone handwrite something and then you input it into data. I mean, I was thinking maybe the group might want to think about having a laptop, a couple of laptops or something out there, and maybe a survey monkey survey that people can just type it in, fill it out. I mean, it's typed, so, and then it can populate data fields, it, just a thought on that, because we've gone through a few years of these tickets and some of the issues with them, and it might be easy. And there's also like an app that'll populate and do random drawings from it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. I think the app idea would be a good one, because I think most people have smartphones, mm -hmm. um, rather than having to take laptops or tablets out there in case they walk off. I think that's something we can think about and explore and follow up on it next month with yeah. an I with a firm decision one way or the other. Because um, we, you can even keep it, you know, have the information at, they usually have a table that's, you know, that they provide things at. Yeah. At the link or whatever. Um, I, I don't know. What are we doing with the information we're collecting? So... <clears throat> Basically, it was to get an idea of how people, last year the, the push was to figure out how people were using the trails. So there was a field saying, hey, what are you doing out here? How often are you out here? Okay. Uh, so it was mostly just to help us get a better pulse on, on the use. Um, beyond that, we haven't really used. Uh, we're not building a marketing list to send things out to or anything like that. We we have we have those emails. Um, I think we certainly could. The cap or the uh, the CAC uh, I think has a broader reach than anything that we would develop, which is why we probably haven't done it in the past. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, th I think that one certainly has a broader reach, but this one might be more more focused. Targeted, yeah, which maybe is better results. I don't know. I, I think that's something that we we can certainly talk about anytime. We we have that data still, so if we ever want to use it, go forward with it. It's there. Um, okay, so Allison, is there anything else that you needed answers from with the committee as far as planning goes? It sounds like we've got pretty much. Just if, um, as far as like a hike or a run or any of that other stuff that we've done in the past. Um, <laughs> If anybody was um, thinking about doing it again, or anybody had any other ideas on pieces of, so I can check in with the running club. They they usually do a run, and I think last year we did it for an earlier run, which was better. Mm -hmm. Then it got people. Um, so I'll reach out to them again. We had the Boy Scouts yep. did a um, did a booth and did sort of uh, no trail, uh, no trace left behind kind of those principles they were also there I, I think the rangers had a lot of people and we always have ashley as well this is one of hers that she's which i thought was a good mixture and just to know the right amount of tents that i need to order i mean i have our standard number but then we had a couple extra last year but if we're not going to have those groups then we could save a little bit of mm -hmm. i i know we didn't have any sitting around all of them ended up getting used yeah. um and then, like I said, if we open to the youth or the caps and see what they want to do, it, it has not gone well trying to get a photographer to do a walk. No. It has, you know, those things haven't <laughs> um, done as well. But maybe now someone sits on the arts committee that is more um, open to that. So that might be something that's work, that will work better now that we have a committee in town that's focusing on that stuff. But it hasn't done well for us. I'm trying to remember what Ashley did for us last year. Did, did she lead a nature walk? She if didn't. We pulled her off it last year because the years before, it always gets pushed and then it's late and it's hot and, That's right. and it peters off. So I think it's been better to have her there talking about things. Um, you know. So do you, are your kids still on the scouts? Do you have contact? I, I can contact the scouts again and see if they... Um, they want to, and they might be able to at this point also do their no trace, but they're doing a, um, 
are they doing the butterfly bombs? Yeah, <laughs> Do the, I have that right? So they might even have something for people that they could talk about after the, this project that they've done and, and how that's going to help the um, area of pollination. I think that's why they're doing the butterflies, right? Yep. Am I wrong on that? I don't no, know. yeah, the, the milkweed <laughs> But I will, bombs. Um, I will reach out to Doug. So I think the, that that covers everybody that attended last year. So we had us, the running group, the Boy Scouts, Youth Leadership Council, uh, uh, Boulder County, Ashley, and then the activities of uh, Snakes and Hawks. So that that is everybody. I think extending the invite to all of them. Plus we'll add Caps to that. Um, I can reach out to Caps, and I believe I'm pretty sure uh, Daryl McCool is there their chair uh, I can reach out to her and and see so she can bring it up with them see if they have any interest but uh and just on the Boulder Rangers one of the things that they did bring which was nice was the trail etiquette I, I still have that magnet on my um, fridge of who yields to who so I think that was yeah they good. were really nice because that was one of the group's interests last year is getting the word out on trail etiquette because of bikes and um, dogs and horses and you know the conflicts on going on a trail and um, they were really nice they brought the information that we kind of requested them to speak about so you know if the trail etiquette is what the group would like or is there any other issues that you may want Boulder County to address Ashley to address you know so that we have different people talking about different things and maybe not the same things. So maybe for Ashley, I definitely think the Boulder County, they're good on the trail etiquette and it covers, but one of them, it would be nice if they spoke about, we talked about at the meeting for Coyote Ridge last time and, and over the um, this past year, we've been talking about things of trying to explain to people why you stay on trail and the you know erosion and, and things like that. If Ashley can add some of that to her you know, um, to her piece of... What of about the, dog waste? And yeah, dog waste would be the other one I was yeah. thinking, yeah. Now, would that be something we would do within our booth, or could there be someone maybe that we could bring in that more of an expert on it? I don't know who that would be. I, I think Ashley is, the expert. is an expert on that. Yeah, so oh, okay. that would be good. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that would be another good one. And I, it's funny, they just had it again on the news because mm -hmm. there's somebody's groups of mailboxes in another town. Everybody lets their dog do their waste there and nobody picks it up. And then the, the mail people were going to stop delivering to them. Like they had to go to the post office to get their stuff because they were... Wow. It wasn't healthy anymore for them to deliver to that particular area. So it's it's an ongoing problem across the state. So just to clarify, so Ashley's going to talk about erosion, leave no trace, dog waste, and Boulder County is going to talk about trail etiquette. That would be great. And then if they if Boulder County has anything else they want to emphasize, I think we can leave that open to them to yeah. as Do well. Do we also want Ashley to talk about coyotes? I think she always brings her stuff and it's good. I mean, I think, you know, I see constantly on the CAC and on the various Facebooks that um, coyotes come up frequently. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good opportunity for her to, to talk there. The snake guy does a great job on the snakes. So everybody will know <laughs> about snakes more than you ever wanted to know about snakes. You will know, but, but your yeah. boys, Mark, they'll love it. <laughs> They'll know the exact snake that they should get and bring home. I'm looking forward <laughs> to wearing a snake. <laughs> yes. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Well, that all sounds good. So I think we're squared away then. Allison, you you good? Anybody else have anything you want to add add to that? Um, so maybe we can try to finalize things next next month. Perfect. Okay. Uh, next topic: the. Arbor Day event. Um, this is something that uh, we always have a booth over at uh, the town's Arbor Day event that they put on. This year it is on April 15th from 9 to 12 at Wildflower Park. 
for those of you who aren't familiar with what Wildflower Park, yeah. that is the brand new uh, park up next to uh, El Dorado K through eight. Um, and it will have wildflowers. Maybe yeah. not by Arbor Day, but it will have wildflowers. I'm excited to see those. I mean, we're really committing ourselves to that name now. <laughs> you said the 15th at what time? Uh, from 9 to 12. Um, so I think the big thing that we need to uh, figure out uh, for this year is what we want our message to be. Um, in the past, it's always been about trails. We've been trying to do a ton of trail outreach and trying to continue to get the uh, town's input on what is a trail priority and whatnot. That way we can make sure that we are reflecting the community's interests when we were doing our trail rankings. Um, this year we clearly have our open, open space acquisition plan that, that we're putting priority on so that might be something we'd rather talk about and then another topic we might want to talk about to start building an awareness within the community uh, could even be the Rocky Mountain Greenway Trail um, so I guess just throwing it out to, to the group what do we want to focus on I, I, th I think it makes sense to we're, you know, we're currently evaluating these we you know need to hear from as many people as we can um, you know, people are probably going to naturally, I mean, put priority on things that are closer to them. That's mm -hmm. what I do, right? And so I, I think the more people we can hear about, about, hey, what's really important to me? I mean, I think everybody is taking a pause point with the kind of rapid pace of development over the last two or three years, and, and I, I, it doesn't look to be slowing down. So to me, that's the first thing we talk about. And then uh, I think Rocky Mountain Greenway makes a lot of sense to get input on. I mean, um, are we representing everyone's beliefs that you know we think best to avoid, or you know, or half the people saying, "Ah, eh, if it test out, it's fine." So I think gathering more information from you know, the people we effectively represent <coughs> makes a lot of sense on those two uh, those two topics. My only concern is we have people's attention for all of about two minutes. Having more than one topic, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I mean, we'll have both. So if people are interested in one, not the other, we can certainly get them. I'm just, we might not be able to talk to them about both, just short attention spans and whatnot. Um, I'm good with both of those. So, I mean, we can, again, similar to what we've done with the trails, we could probably make a blow up of like the map that we're evaluating or a better map if there is one out there. If I just put this together real quick, but that would be an easy way to show people what, what we're looking at. Um, well, if we could put the map out there. It, it's a Sunday, right? Is it Arbor Day a Sunday or Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. <clears throat> yep. It's a Saturday. Right. Um, Which we won't have another meeting. Well, we do have one more meeting. Yep. So I, I don't think we need to absolutely uh, cement who can attend. I mean, if you can, if you can attend and want to attend uh, and can commit to that now, that would be excellent. My, I... Yeah, our meetings that the week leading up to I'll that. have to check the soccer schedule. Usually this is the uh, – I usually cover this event, or I have in the last couple of years. Anybody's welcome to join me. I've got to just check soccer to, yeah, to yep, see, <laughs> you know. Um, soccer time. Yeah. I don't have any uh, soccer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good I, one. People wander by, and it, it's a I good would one. Be, I would be happy to um, commit to this now. Awesome. Okay, awesome. So we'll we won't leave you out there by yourself. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but we'll we'll figure it out. Might have to be a, a cobbled together, but I definitely think having the big map there. Um, I think we don't necessarily have to talk to it, but if we have a poster about the dog poop or something like that, is always another good oh, yeah. one to That's stick right. just in the background. I think we should try to hit that as much as we can. At every of the upcoming yeah, events, just to just have it be there, like, um, and Ashley will also be there, so you may yeah, want th to think about if you want to separate some things. Um, the group can kind of. What does she normally talk about at the Arbor Day events? Does coyotes, she coyotes, coyotes, usually because yeah. it's the spring pup ah, kind right. of the time, and the weather can always be a little dicey for this yep. event. It's usually a little chilly in the morning. We've had rain, but it's been fine. I mean, people show up. It's mm -hmm. you know. Where is it held? This it used to be a Founders Park, but they moved it this oh, year. Oh, that wild, oh, Sorry, the, the wildfire. Wild yeah, <laughs> so it will be over there. Cool, um, that'll be cool. 
you know, so. Cool park. Uh -huh. And they usually somebody I don't know who provides I don't know if it's the town or whatever but there's always co there's always coffee and carbs so <laughs> that's always there so uh, so did we did you want to give Ashley some specific things because I'll have to kind of get that ready before the ne our next meeting and probably anything the group would like I would probably have to do before that because uh, staff usually works to do these events so yeah. I mean I, I agree with what Ken's saying I, you know I echo his thoughts that I think some version of this map is you know a visual tell like to your point we're gonna have a fleeting moment to catch their attention mm -hmm. and, and I think this is pretty eye-opening honestly yeah. and so um, you know, having that up maybe as a talking point mm -hmm. and then um, <coughs> you, you know it's it's in the news it's in every community around us you know and it's the you know the dog poop discussion it's like snakes it draws everybody has an opinion on it and um you know one of the things that i saw in the news this week was jefferson county shut down a major park mm -hmm. completely shut it down due to dog waste yep. mm -hmm. which um you know if that's not a foreboding sign to all the careless dog owners then i don't know what is i mean that, that's a major thing to me and so i think we could have ashley talk to that specifically i think that that's my idea for what we would have from her yeah and i don't think she needs to take coyotes off if she can be able to speak to both i think that would be mm -hmm. optimal i okay. don't know um how much money we have to for things but if we were to hand out things uh i think dog bags could be good either like little rolls of them or individual dog bags mm -hmm. around that topic we have i mean the town puts them out so would we have to purchase more or could we just okay well, <clears throat> somebody would have to purchase oh, more yeah. um, because the ones that we have are like specifically on wickets that mm -hmm. okay yep. go into like the um, the dispensers. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. And most people have those rolls and mm -hmm. the little mm -hmm. velcro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can we look and see what a price on that is? The rolls. Sure. Maybe. Yeah, we can see. I, I can look that up, see if I can find those little giveaways. I've seen some really cool ones of those, but. I think that's well, a great swag. Yeah, yeah. that would be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be a well, good way. Well, if we way. buy for that, we could, if we buy enough, it could be for both events. It could be for True. Arbor Day and then um, Trails Day. Trails Day, because oh, people do walk by with their, their dogs, so. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, yeah, no. Go right ahead. Do I have to turn the mic on? Is it already on? I think it's always on. Okay. Um, and I get talking about the dog poop thing as much as possible. <laughs> Just to let you know, last year I was by what I call the upper pond. There was a rattlesnake not 10 feet off the trail. Mm -hmm. I turned, and there was a rattlesnake right there. My dogs walked past it first, luckily, so I got an alert. Um, I dispatched the rattlesnake because of where it was I'm not proud of that but I didn't understand poop is a big deal poop's not going to kill anybody <laughs> a rattlesnake might so I understand wanting to talk about it but let's look at some of the other threats of the rattlesnake being that close and I've seen them on the other side of the goalie by the south pond because I'm out there a ton I'm out there all the time so just mm -hmm. oh yeah and that's teaching kids to be rattlesnake aware yep and that's something we cover huge at, at the national trails, trails day, day event. that's what the snake guy does yeah and we also have individual standalone programs on snakes with our center for snake conservation he brings out all the snakes mm -hmm. and talks about how to for children and adults on how to act around the snakes and their what their responses are like and uh, basic safety and how to identify um, actually do you have any or <laughs> do we have any idea if ashley does have uh, any background with snakes or anything like that? Well, the good thing is we can always look it up. <laughs> <laughs> if I mean, if if it's something that she all, she already has some type of program in in her back pocket as well. That I mean, she has like the the coyote school. It's a great eye catcher that brings people in. She I think does. We had her do snakes last year. Sorry. Oh, I was oh. going to say. I mean, I've been on walks several times. Unfortunately, I was traveling for business and missed the winter wildlife walk this time. But um, she does bring it up. Okay. 
and she does talk about it and um, if if that's something we could also add to, to her just because I mean the timing is pretty perfect because snakes are starting to come out this time of year and yeah. by the time the Arbor Day event rolls around they uh, they should be out by then yeah. awesome um, okay I think we're in good shape then uh, what we can do since we'll, we would have to act on the poop roll stuff uh, before uh, our next meeting is we can communicate through email what prices look like and whether it's something that's feasible and if need and if it is we can go ahead and uh, try to get that purchased beforehand so that they're available and ready for distribution prior to the event well, do we need to make a decision or a recommendation tonight on if we want to get some sort of map printed I, mean, I don't know what the lead time on getting these printed is it three days or three weeks or we don't need a recommendation to that yeah I just need to know what we want to do yeah we want it the same size as we had for the um, yeah the same size as the trails like that yeah. yeah that poster size that's good. that's a great eye catcher that just draws people into the booth yep. okay perfect well mm -hmm. uh so i would say just uh everybody just kind of keep this in the back of your mind for your schedules see if you can t attend sir appreciate the volunteer and definitely be there and we'll make sure other people are are there as well so just to clarify, you wanted the poster size map, but you also want a poster size dog waste blurb stuff. Yep. So you yep. want two posters? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that would be perfect. And both of those should be reusable on all the events. Yes. Yeah. This like we did last year, we can just keep reusing it. At yeah. The so events. we'll have it at Trails Day. We'll have it at Fourth of July Chili Fest. <clears throat> so down the line with them. Okay. So next, uh, <clears throat> the next topic is a cleanup event with RCAC. This is uh, bringing us full circle with uh, where we've been on our dog waste uh, discussion so far. Uh, we had, in prior meetings, discussed partnering with uh, both RCAC and ProStack to see if they'd be interested in some type of joint event. Um, I've been in communication with the chairs of both of those committees. Um, I'll read you the RCAC response. Uh, they discussed it at their uh, meeting last month. Uh, they meet the Thursdays of the same week we meet, so they meet tomorrow night. Um, but they discussed it at their mat their last meeting, and they were also they were all in agreement that they'd be happy to uh, partner up on some type of clean cleanup event. Um, and they also touched base on the possibility of adjusting some of the language in the do good section of the town newsletter um, to help encourage uh, responsible pet waste pickup. Um, they were curious about whether or not we had specific ideas and suggestions and kind of wanted us to take the lead on it, it sounded like. Um, and then as far as ProStack goes, uh, they are planning on doing a trail maintenance day up at Coyote Ridge sometime this spring and they felt if we wanted to isolate a pickup event uh, to just Coyote Ridge, then they'd be interested in partnering uh, for that same event. So it could be both a, a maintenance day uh, and a waste pickup day. Um, but if we were gonna do it beyond that, then it sounded like they weren't necessarily uh, had the resources to partner up at this time. So. I guess we can uh, break the conversation into two language into two two pieces: a cleanup event and a uh, do good language that we've talked about in the past. So I guess just a cleanup event is that something we're still interested in uh, as a group uh, hosting? What we had talked about at our prior meetings was not necessarily isolating it to any one area, more or less making it available to the areas that people use because that will uh, 
hopefully garner more participation and maybe something we could do is have people pre-sign up for it and we could deliver them i mean and i'd be happy to do this but deliver them bags and gloves or whatnot to help them do it i mean anything that will that will help get as many people out there as possible um is that something we're we're still interested in in i guess hosting and do we have any other ideas for that event other than what I just said? Would one of the ideas of it, though, to be the marketing around how much we collected? So do you want to try to, you know, it's a pain, but to collect it all at the end and say, look, we picked up X hundred pounds of waste or whatever. I, I was thinking about that, too. I think what might be best is... if. We could do a follow-up portion and have people estimate how much they uh, picked up, um, and That'd then be a lot easier logistically. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to think about the same thing. Sounds like a fun job. Trying to get measure and just yeah, I think getting estimates and it's not going to be the most precise, but it's close enough. We just need ballparks. Mm -hmm. It would be a great photo op, though. You could <laughs> actually weigh it. <laughs> Bags of poop. <laughs> Who has a hatchback that wants to pick it all up? <laughs> Getting the Subaru out there. <laughs> oh, man. You thinking of having a few set locations, or just because a general across many areas? I think that's something that we need to decide. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the back of my mind, I figured if we tried to dictate where to do it, we would only get the people who use those areas out there and actually picking it up because they're the only ones that would care. But if we open it up to everybody and just say. Go to where you go to where you spend your time. Go to what matters to you. Um, then that would be our best way to get people. And that was kind of it, with that. It's a much less structured event, and it gives them the opportunity to. I mean, a positive is it gives them the opportunity to a go where they're passionate, but b to do it on at the times that they're they want to do it. So we could open it up for like an entire weekend and mm -hmm. say do it sometime this weekend and we'll drop off uh, bags and whatnot to, to anybody who signs up on say Friday they have Saturday and Sunday and then Monday we can reach back out to them or have them reach out to us to let us know their estimate on how much they picked up um, again it's much less structured it's harder to, to see if that would be as successful but I mean what that's up for discussion right now I think that's what we'd want. Yes, yeah, so everybody can participate however they feel, wh whatever area needs it. Yeah, and I think it's a gamble because we don't only do things this way. Yeah, right. So who knows if this will actually be successful. Uh, <laughs> if it's not a structure, maybe it's yeah. not, but we haven't done anything like that in the past, so. Do you, do you have a date in mind yet? That was the other thing that it was what we needed to address tonight. So do we want to wait a month or two months to make sure that it's absolutely going to be nice or do we want to try to get this started and move on it soon i think that you know if we i do think if we partner with prostat like then you have people out there and then we could have a pickup of it there if we get rcac at the same time we it still might be to try to hit a few areas but if you at least put one or two <coughs> committee members at each area then you might get more help. So I'm thinking like Coyote Ridge has a lot, um, that area over by, well don't, is, is that Anderson in the back there that you guys yeah. talked, that, that has a Anderson lot. Property. Um, so we might, it might be just that we don't say everywhere, but we say these three places and between the two committees, if we can get a couple of people at each spot, it might go better, right? And it might be a good idea as far as distributing <clears throat> bags or gloves like you were talking about if there's that event going on at Coyote Ridge and it's kind of like a trails cleanup yep. but also in the other areas at least you have a staging point mm -hmm. to distribute things if people want to come and pick things up yeah. okay I think it's it's a great idea to, and I, I think you know, we should do it sooner rather than later uh, for a number of reasons. You know, the snakes is one thing. You know, we want to do it before they start True. waking up. Um, also, before all the grass starts growing and then everything gets mowed over and becomes a, a big mess. Um, I think in terms of just getting getting the word out to the community, to the extent that we can have an organized cleanup, that's great. But to the extent that we also have, listen, we understand that our schedules don't work 
uh, with everybody. So just make a commitment to spend a little bit of time on a Saturday and just you know, do some good and, you know, cut the crap. And, <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole slew. And, and, and let's just see what we can do as a, as a community to, to actually just make this a cleaner and prettier place to live. So I, I, I support it fully and say let's do it sooner rather than later, and I'm happy to publicize it with the board. And So it sounds like what might be good then is we could do both like uh, a, a – lack of better words, a centralized and a decentralized event almost. So we could partner with ProStack and focus on the Coyote Ridge area uh, when they do it. And then we could also do something like, hey, on this Saturday, whenever it's convenient for you, let's get out there and, and get as much clean as we can right. or something like that. Well, it's kind of like people do with, with Earth Day and Arbor Day. It's, yeah. uh, you know, they may have like a mass tree planting, but then if you don't show up at the community event, you commit to planting a tree on your own property or, or mm -hmm. some, somewhere else. and I think, <clears throat> I don't know exactly when ProStack is planning on doing their event. I think it's at least a couple months away, um, but we can certainly get the talk about getting something else earlier than that. I think the snake thing's a <laughs> really good point. I don't want well, I mean, my, my immediate thought is, you know, we've got the Arbor Day event we're going to be talking about on a 415. Do we have it shortly after that? You know, to where we you know, we have a short window to you know, people will say oh well next weekend you know and well you know, next I, weekend isn't that Earth Day next the twenty second the twenty second so it's very close to the following weekend so we could yeah. talk about it on the fifteenth and then say wow. everybody go clean up there's also National Day of Service which typically the town does some sort of larger you know do they do large volunteer spring? event. Do you know what day that is? I thought that's no. September. I, I thought National I Day. Is I, I think there's two, oh, and okay. I think that was what yeah. uh, ProStack, Prostack was trying to align theirs with. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I kind of agree with Mark about sooner rather than later because I think it's worse over the winter. I think it's dark. I think it's cold, and people just yeah. go. Yeah. And so, I think it would be good to do it sooner rather than later. I don't know. Given that we're, you know, the what eighth of March today or something like that, could we get it done much earlier than the Arbor Day event? I think, I think with advertising it and you know trying to get people there. I, I think doing it the weekend after Arbor Day makes a lot of sense. We can use this Arbor Day as the, the kind of that big push. We're going to have people right in front of us. I, I think that's yeah, a great I idea. Agree. I mean, you could sign people up that day, hand out the swag, the bags and the gloves at Arbor Day to get them started. Yeah, also. And, so, and, and frankly, it's a problem that's just going to continue to perpetuate. And the longer it goes before the roads and the sidewalks and the trails get cleaned up, mm -hmm. the, the longer it's going to be a problem. And uh, you know, in, in my opinion, you know, the the tension that sort of escalated last summer between you know the the leash and the off leash and the, the people picking up after their poop. This is one way to actually, I think, you know, lead by example, mm -hmm. and just says, okay, regardless of all of that, we want to make our town a, a prettier place to live, and yep. just do our part. So, this um, cleanup—it's not just dog poop, but trash and other stuff. I wonder if, if at Arbor Day, if we were to advertise it, if it, there could be, you know, as folks like uh, give us an estimate afterwards of how much they cleaned up. If there's some sort of like photo contest, right? If you like found like the craziest thing or how much you amassed, I don't know if that would be of interest to like kiddos as they were helping. We could, uh, we could advertise a, uh, a hashtag for it and get people to, to post on Instagram, on Twitter, and it will be a self-documenting thing that we can use for promotional materials and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And whoever picks up the most, yeah. I think I think we can use that as an incentive and say, hey, there'll, there'll be prize for who, who can show us the picked up the most bags or something like that. Okay, so I can, uh, I'll can i work with uh, RCAC, uh, let them know that this is what we're thinking, get them on board, hopefully. Um, and I'll also talk to ProStack, let them know that we're interested in, in partnering with them uh, to, to add a waste pickup component to their not to their day of service event at Coyote Ridge. Um, and I would say, seeing as how we only have one meeting between now and Arbor Day, uh, 
as things emerge, just watch your emails and we'll correspond via email to make sure we're all on the same page and have things squared away. If we have places where people go, like I said, I think it's that Anderson area that you guys have talked about. Um, we already got Coyote, Coyote Ridge covered. The other area is behind the Bell Flatirons, right? People talk about that. The disc golf area. The disc golf area is the other. Like if we're going to direct people to like three sort of hot spots, yeah, I think it's that area, the Anderson, and then like I said, the Coyote Ridge. So th for that, that's something that we would, we could do on the same, on the day of service. So we could, is, is that what you're envisioning? So we could have some people up with Pro Stack at Coyote Ridge. We could have some people over at say the Anderson property and some people over at say the disc golf property yeah. leading here's bags whatever and yeah if we okay. are gonna say I think that those are the three I mean people can certainly go around their areas like you said that walk sure. and it sounds like a number of you I don't own a dog but a number of you who do already are picking up after your neighbors mm -hmm. as something that you're doing but um, those seem to be the really big areas that people have not picked up that we've heard the most. Which um, I kind of wonder, I mean, you Because I think because they're not owned, so people right. just assume, like, nobody's going to... Not only owned, but they're not manicured. I mean, yeah. you don't notice this... Pro I don't notice this problem at the Purple Park nearly as much. But it's, it's you know, more traffic. It's more groomed. And I, I, I'm, I mean... You can't I, get away with it because I'm standing 15 feet from you. And right. you're like, but oh. I kind of wonder if people just think, oh, this is natural. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's people just don't like walking in because into those areas because it's tall. It's it's more snowy. I mean, that's just my observation around my house where it piles up. Yeah. Um, okay. As far as signage and that sort of thing goes, um, Allison, have you guys talked at all about this sort of about adding signage or anything at a staff level you sent out or what costs were if we were trying to add any placards well there was some signage put up last year as, as far as the ordinance um that the group has talked about and we kind of talked about some of the funny signs we have also changed the language of the do-gooder i mean there was um the article that patricia mentioned in the newsletter Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was very, I <laughs> noticed it right away. And it so was that, you know, um, so instead of it being that same do-gooder, there was more additional information and being responsible and how much, if, you know, with how many residents we have, if one person let their one dog and how many pounds it would be in a week and mm -hmm. a day and all that stuff. So, um you know, I didn't, I, did the group think that that wording, that new language was good or was there anything you wanted to add? I thought that was a good write-up. I think it, it helps yeah. drop, drive home the message. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about it. We've seen different ideas. We heard great ideas tonight. Um, sounds like RCAC has ideas. Um, I think what might be good is we've got ideas from this group. Uh, and kind of know where we want to go. I think what uh, the next steps might be if we're going to add additional signage or change language or whatnot is push RCAC to send anything so we can aggregate all of our ideas, uh, send additional ideas from the community uh, if for signage and whatnot, and then we can uh, look at all the ideas and options and whatnot and, and see if there's better ways to go forward. That might be our next steps. So I think we might be good on that as a committee for tonight. We can just follow up on that later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. So I think we're, we're all squared away on that topic. All right. Uh, next topic is the McCaslin Trail and Rocky Mountain Greenway. This was something that uh, Tracy wanted to, to bring up tonight. Um, I think her biggest concern stemmed from our conversation uh, with the board at our joint meeting. Uh, and what had been discussed there was that there is a trail that is being considered in the... No. Uh, it's that's being considered with the Rocky Mountain Greenway project that could potentially come into Superior. Um, 
it's is this the alternate trail or one that that's, goes that's what i was trying to figure out so tracy was really concerned about the trail that we might be building at superior that was going to go along the caslin so uh so the one that goes down from 128 down the caslin right? well it doesn't it, i think it goes from indiana uh to Calmonte. i think that's the one she was referring to um yep right yep one of the proposed alignments for the rocky mountain greenway had the trail coming across 128 then going down what this referred i refer to as a st francis trail. yeah and it is a st francis trail yep. um i but that wasn't going through the green exactly right? so, I, so i i'm not sure i'm not sure exactly what tracy's concern was that was the alternate trail that would allow people to avoid rocky flats right. that would help keep it cleaner i, I was a little five. confused Trail 5 here, though, we always talked about that it kind of dead-ended, and then it would connect into the Greenway. That was I thought that was the whole point of this, potentially, was connecting in there at some point. So maybe Wasn't she's referring that to this. Like yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the, the one. That's the one I assumed it was. Ah, okay. Was I wasn't sure. I was assuming it was the different one. Yeah, see, I was a little confused, too, because I, when I read her email response, I felt like she was talking about the trail on the east side of McCaslin. That's what I thought. And and my immediate thought was, I don't I don't know that we don't build that trail. You so we say oh, well you can't go up there. I mean I, I think you build the trail and then you, people make a reasoned decision for themselves whether they continue whether it goes in Rocky Flats or around it. Well, and I, I think that trail is important to help people go around it. Even it, it encourages the going around it. Uh, but if she was talking about the other trail, uh, Trail 5, that kind of loops around uh, to connect to 128, that that makes more sense and why she'd be concerned. Yeah. Um, that trail is... Because that loops down to where they're, they were proposing that... The underpass. Around, the underpass. Yeah. Right. So this I, one. I don't right. think it... So if that's the trail that was being referred to, I don't think it's something that we need to be concerned about right now. Uh, that's... Uh, part of the area that Boulder County said is going to be in their eastern grasslands management plan update that they may or may not do in, in a couple of year. years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no matter what, as of right now, nothing's moving on that. So right. it, it's, as always, I think it's something that we keep our eye on. Mm -hmm. um, and as it comes up, we provide our feedback. Right. I heard directly from Boulder County last weekend that nothing in Boulder County happens without a management plan. Mm -hmm. All management plans are effectively years behind after the flood yep. and that anything that would happen goes through a planning process and management plan and it's years away. Yep. Uh, we were specifically talking about the potential of an alternate trail on Colton, um, something other than just the dirt road. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they basically said, we'll consider it next time it comes up in management plan, that's years away. Okay, yeah. so they didn't so give you an updated time frame. No, they just not at all. Years away again. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's been their mantra. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, do we know, uh, did Sandy know when the testing was going to be complete from the Greenway? Does anybody have an estimate? I didn't hear an estimate from her. Did anybody... Here, yes. I think there's still our unit of protocol. Last yeah, yeah that's there was my thought too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's still up in the air. It's something we'll definitely need to keep our finger on the pulse of. But okay, I don't think we have any new information right now. Right. Okay. Well, that was an easy one then. Um, and that actually brings us to our updates and look ahead. Um, the first one is the Jeff and Page concert. Uh. We had previously discussed uh, coordinating a food vendor for the event. Um, we have booked Sweet Cow uh, as of right now. However, one of the things that uh, came up during our meeting with the town trustees was that uh, George Kuffner Sr., not George Kuffner on ProStack, but his father, uh, has a uh, ice cream machine and he uh, will on occasion come to our town events and give out free ice cream um, and that we are pushed to follow up with him to uh, no, uh, 
follow up with him to see if he'd be willing to do that. And if he is, then we should pros- pursue that rather than Sweet Cow. Um, I spoke with him uh, on Friday last week. He was checking his schedule to see if he had any conflicts. Um, and if not, then he sounded like he'd be interested. I haven't heard back from him yet, so we're still up in the air. No matter what, we're going to have an ice cream vendor, whether it's him providing free ice cream or whether it's Sweet Cow with their ice cream truck uh, is Did, up in the air. Didn't they mention too at the meeting that maybe to have uh, free Sweet Cow ice cream? That's, that's what I interpreted as well, is like subsidize you know, 200 cones or whatever you know, free off the... Oh. So we would just out pay out what Sweet Cow... What was it, 250? 200. 200? Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, I think that's what, what we were talking about. Is there was a question of hitting the guarantee, the minimum you know, level to hit Sweet Cow, and then he said, well, what if we just paid for it mm-hmm. and just made it free ice cream for everybody? So, well, And that seemed like everybody was in favor of that. Yeah, so that's... I. Who doesn't love free ice cream? Yeah. Well, I think the free ice cream <laughs> will go. The question is, is, do we stop it at the 200 mark with Sweet Cow or... If <laughs> if it goes up to 500, are we then on the hook for, like at the 200, does Sweet Cow start saying to you, say, well, you're you're the 201, you're you're paying. Right. I mean, I, I, not that it matters. I just I know, see your point. Cap? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I agree with with the kind of the the sentiment the <laughs> sentiment that we had at the meeting. It's you know I think it's a great idea to draw more people, and that's our whole idea is to get more people out there. In the back of my head, I think I could see this, you know, going out. Hey, there's free sweet cow in Superior, and you know, you know, could be potentially big crowds. I mean, I would probably say we would say first 200 or 250, whatever our target is, or you know, so we essentially cap what our input is, right? Yeah, and I think what we could do for that is also just name like a couple of their products rather than the, their entire menu because. Some of their things get, do get pricey, so we could say the first, uh, two hundred like, vanilla cones. <laughs> yeah, some, something <laughs> of those uh, along those lines. We, we could certainly work with them. I'm sure that won't be a problem, I and mean, we could. Yeah, I don't have a problem with. Yeah. Me. I mean, we we were talking about that we would cover if they couldn't make it, and I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I just do worry <laughs> that it could be. You know, if it goes over, are we eating? You know, a larger amount than than we thought. I think it's such a great event, and you know, my kids. We went to the Jeff and Paige concert last summer, and and they had a you know, a blast, just running around the grass and having fun. And, I mean, how much better could it be if you had yeah. free ice cream? I mean, come on. That's, oh yeah. Oh no, the, yeah. the ice cream would go. It's it's just now, like you said, did it yeah. just tweet out and everyone and their brother is down well, down at the it, bar? It, it will only be a limited time. I mean, it's only yeah. the Jeff Page concert's only an hour, so I, I think true. we only and the have the line will for, limit. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So exactly. That yeah. line so can get. It, yeah. <laughs> so if if George can't do it, and we do go the sweet cow route, I mean, do we, we have a thing on sweet cow that we have to say? Yep, yeah, we're. I mean, are we locked in at a certain point? Like the date is locked, and we own it. Like because at some point, if we. I'm just asking how much do we give George mm-hmm. leeway and how much do we say the date is locked so that they don't lose business? Like, it, I mean, I would think at some point we, if we book the date with them, we've booked it. So Sean was the one coordinating with Sweet Cow. We have locked in the date. Uh, I asked Sean if that – are we contractually obligated to go with them at this point? And he said based off his reading of what we agreed to with them, no, we're not. So – I, okay. I'm still going to follow up with George this week to make okay. to get this yeah. cleared up immediately. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's a courtesy to Sweet Cow if we know we're going a different direction, we would cancel it even if we have no ab- uh, absolutely thing. But um, I mean, it, I, I think it's all all good discussion around. You know, we're limited by line and time, which mm-hmm. I think gives us a safe cap. Well, and okay. the board is clearly behind it. I, I don't mm-hmm. think this is something we need to worry about uh, too much. Uh, I, I, I just question. So, can can George handle the the amount of people that we're expecting to have? Uh, my understanding is that the other events that he's done is like on the lines of Chili Fest and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That's the same size, if not bigger, than what we're going to have at Jeff and Page. So, I, I'm not familiar with it. I haven't actually seen him do it before, but my understanding is yes. Okay. When I was in the Chili Fest line, just because. 
um, I was in line for 45 minutes. Uh. Now, it wasn't his, I mean, because I, well, it could be his, but I paid for it. Like, just, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a donated one, but we stood 45 minutes. Well, I mean, to, to, to that the, point, do we have them both? I mean, it's not, I, I don't think it's going to be, you know, incredibly, if the lines are long in one, then they would shorten out to the other. I would say let's just stick with one for this one and see how it goes. Okay. I, I also... I feel awful if we had one of them, if I had both of them out there and, I mean. One was better than the other. Yeah, one ended up getting on the lines or, God, who knows, I mean, worse comes to worse. There's bad weather and we don't get the turnout. Yeah, We're then true. obligated for the 200 bucks with Sweet Cow and we've had George come out and waste his time. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I, I'd i say I, I'll, I'll follow up with George and we'll. Uh, Go from there. Yeah, we'll nail this down next month. Okay. Um, the next, the next piece. There's a calendar, calendar note. Uh, there, I don't know if this has been uh, set in stone yet. Uh, Martin Toth, the assistant town manager, uh, is tentatively scheduling a committee open house. It is set in stone. All right, we're good. So it, it, we do have a committee open house on Wednesday, April 26th, uh, from six to seven here at town hall. Um, <clears throat> that's just. A opportunity for anybody who's interested in the committees to come out and talk to us and figure out what it's all about we generally try to send one person um, no one needs a volunteer right now or anything like that uh, we can talk about this at our next meeting but just giving everybody a heads up um, the next item is the regional trails bus tour um, this is something that Allison sent out to all of us um, Boulder County uh, was going to do a bus tour with all of the advisory committee members and staff from the open space programs in Boulder County. Um, they were going to talk about it at the uh, POSAC, the Parks and Open Space Advisory Committee meeting in February to try to finalize a date. I, their minutes aren't posted online yet, and I couldn't attend. Allison, do you have any idea? She's going to send me an update, and okay. as soon as I have that, I'll send it out to the group. So far, only one member has shown interest and given me a date that they preferred. So I sent that information on. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely interested if it works with my schedule, but yeah. um, I wasn't firm on a date, so... Uh, that was my concern as well. I'm, I'm interested, but... I think I, they were floating the 20th of May. Yeah. Um, which right now looks like it works for me. So if that's what they come up with, it, it definitely... It, it sounds like it's going to be an all-day event, but definitely a worthwhile one for anyone who can attend because it's going to go through all their... Yeah. Get a, a tentative sort of mapping out of go here, go here, go here. So does that... So when they reach back out to you, that's when they'll ask for a set number of people who are interested in attending, and they'll tell us the date they're there. I assume so. Okay. Um, initially, they just asked for interest, number one, I guess, to start thinking about reserving how much space they needed to take people around, and then number two, what, what were the good dates for everyone, and then as soon as the dates are finalized, she'll send it out again. Hopefully, we can respond if other parties are interested. Schedule works for them. And, uh, go from there. Yeah. Okay. So keep your eyes open for your, an email about this, and we'll go from go from there. Um. <clears throat> last but definitely not least, the winter wildlife walk recap. So Ashley was really excited. They saw a coyote and an eagle. Oh, how on cool. the trail. Oh, that's oh, excellent. I, I, I hate this. It takes of me course. off. <laughs> We only had nine people, though. Oh. So at the end of the year, you know, I'll compile numbers for all of our programs, and we do surveys, and um, dang it. we kind of make a decision on what we want to continue, what we might want to add. Um, and one of the thoughts was the art and nature program that we were thinking about, and then we have our new snake uh, conservation group since last year 
So if we only have nine people, um, you know, depending on how all the other programs wash out at the end of the year, just to kind of be mindful about how we go forward and what we want to keep on doing or give it a rest and come back to it or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So that's, that's probably why they saw the coyote because they only had nine people. <laughs> like yeah. it wasn't a big group. Because <laughs> when I went last year, there was like twenty-five or thirty of us, so we were probably right. like rambling along and loud and <laughs> all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that uh, that finishes out our agenda. Does anybody have anything that they want to just bring up while we're all here? Uh, anything at all? Go to the order. Ken, just real quick, I'm yeah. looking at our evaluation worksheet yep. there's just some terms on here I'm not familiar with and so what's the best way to do that I mean I know I can look them up but should I just look them up do my best and run them by you or I, I would say that if you're having that question there's probably other people in right, the committee that's, that's also I'm having the question um, uh, I would say whatever those terms are uh, shoot an email out to the group that specifies what they are along with what you your understanding of the term is okay. and we will uh confirm debate whatnot okay. and yep and go that from there and make sure good. we're all on the That's same page you okay. can also include me on it um, okay and i've read lots of them <laughs> lots okay. of the plans and stuff so sometimes you know i might be able to recall where i've seen a term or something and i can find it pretty quickly okay thank you all right well, if nothing else, then we are adjourned. Ten minutes early at that. Yeah, you're sure you're welcome.